We're making tremendous progress with cancer. Nevertheless, still one in four men and one in five women will die of cancer. We can remove it, we can shrink it, we can treat it, but it's the spread, or what we call the metastasis of the disease, that is a big problem. So the concept behind precision oncology is that even though two patients have the same type of cancer, let's say lung cancer, breast cancer, or prostate cancer, their cancers may in fact be so different on a genetic level that they need to be treated with different medicines. However, the situation is actually even more complex than that. If you zoom in to one patient's tumor and you start looking at different regions of the tumor, you begin to realize that the regions of the tumor are actually quite different as well. The problem is, is if you treat one region of the cancer, the other regions that are genetically different may in fact survive and continue to progress. How do we go in there and grab these cells to understand the genetic differences between them? Cells that lead invasion have always been a topic of interest in the cancer metastasis field, but we wanted to try and find a new way to tackle it and really dive into what's driving these cells. What we are doing now is we are looking at a large mass of cells and we ask the question, why is this one cell so metastatic? Why does it spread so much? There was one particular movie where we saw um, what we call leader cell come out, you know, away from the rest of the cells and then realize that nobody was following him. So he actually did a 180, went back and grabbed cells to bring out with him. This was not a phenomenon that we were expecting to see. Our first idea was to try and just kill the leader cell and then watch what happened to the follower cells. Could they still move into the microenvironment? Or was their movement just completely abolished once we killed the leader cell? And actually some of those live cell movies that we initially got answered that question for us before we even had to do you know, the experiments. We saw that when a leader cell detached or fell off or died unexpectedly, the followers could no longer move. So it raises the intriguing question then, is what makes that leader cell so important. And once we understand why it's so important, how do you then kill or stop that leader cell from invading? We're talking about five cells and maybe 10,000. It's not like we have you know, microscopic tweezers that we can go and just pluck out the cell that we want. You know, we really had to come up with a creative way to really get at these cells and extract them. So once I have the cells of interest that I want to photoconvert, I can then draw a region of interest around those cells using the software. So to begin, all our cells are green, but then we pick the cell we want and we use a laser to turn that cell or perhaps even a group of cells red. So we're able to zap any cell we want and turn it red based upon any behavior that we want. It could be a fast moving cell, like a leader cell. It could be a fast growing cell. It could be a cell that doesn't respond or is resistant to a treatment. Now we have created a new research tool that we hope could spawn numerous experiments. If we could stop those leader cells, we could perhaps beat the number one problem of cancer metastasis. Perhaps we could create treatments that may not actually kill the tumor, but may actually stop it from spreading.